Hi everyone, it's me, Krillius, Team Racing Productions MC and producer. And today I am here with... Hi, I'm Rahana Mohammed, and I'm chair of the DC Center's Board of Directors. Awesome, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me. It's my pleasure, it's my pleasure. Tell me, how are you doing right now during the pandemic? Um, well, I think as well as any of us are. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel really lucky because uh, I have a job that lets me work from home very easily. So um, for me, at least, it's been a lot of time with my wife and the cats at home uh, in quarantine, but uh -huh. um, working regularly and just you know, uh, doing everything I can to support the work of the DC Center. Mm -hmm. um, that's been really cool, just seeing everything that they've been able to achieve, even under these circumstances. From oh, that's great. But yeah. don't tell me some of them. Tell me some of the work that they're doing right now. Yeah, so um, they've been able to move a lot of the essential services online. We're still mm -hmm. doing... Um, uh, we're still, like, our social worker is still meeting with clients and doing sessions. We're still doing intake, our total health team is still supporting their clients. And we've moved a lot of our support groups and social groups online, which is really cool because people are still getting to connect and be in that community, um, which is more important now than ever. Yes, and, definitely, a hundred percent. Hard, yeah. Yes. Uh, so tell me, what are some of the, the, the important things, the important things that you think are affecting the LGBTQ Q community, you know, specifically and disproportionately during this time that we're going through? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, well, something that's hitting the whole nonprofit community right now is mm -hmm. the funding issues, right? Yes. I mean, with so many people going on unemployment and having um, their own issues with, uh, with money, um, it means that we're getting fewer donations, and mm -hmm. obviously the DC budget is uh, going to have a crunch next fiscal year, so we're all very concerned about that. Um, yeah. But with regards to the LGBTQ community, that's on top of the health disparities that already exist in our community Yes. Um, that make our community a lot more vulnerable and susceptible to um, this disease and to this pandemic. Um, and you know, a lot of our organizations provide housing and mm -hmm. services that can't be done remotely. Um, so that hasn't impacted the DC Center because we don't provide housing, but we haven't been able to do some of our walk-in services, right? Uh. I mean, that's something that I really miss in this time is, you know, we have a computer lab in the DC Center that people can pop into yes. and use the computer, print things out, but obviously that's closed. Um, so that's really been negatively impacting some of our community members. Oh, wow. Speaking of, you know, housing services and stuff like that, because of the pandemic, I know that there are a lot of um, queer people that have to, especially like students or people that weren't at home or stuff like that, who have to go back home or who have to be now around people or around their family members, that may not necessarily be you know, um, you know, people that care about the fact that they are queer, you know, I know it's very hard for some gay, lesbian, and trans people um, to go home and to be now with these family members that that's not what they care about. What do you think about that? And how can we help these people? Yeah, I mean, it's been really heartbreaking reading some of the articles and reports that have come out on this issue on both sides, right? I mean, I've read many articles and seen a lot of data about um, about kids and young people going home and um, being stuck in unsupportive environments. Mm. But I also have seen some interesting pieces about LGBTQ parents, um, you know, going through negative situations with other family members and even with their kids. Um, so I think that in this time, it's just really important for those of us who are not going through that hardship mm -hmm. to continue to reach out, right? Yeah. Continue to continue to hold our arms open and be ready to be with those folks in community. Um, and that's why I'm so grateful that the DC Center has been doing those support groups because, you know, we have a coming out group, for example, yes. that's people that are in the process of coming out. And I remember when I came out um, and it was a really tough time. Mm -hmm. you know? and if I wasn't able to connect with 
other members of the LGBTQ community and hear about their experiences, um, I don't know what I would have done. So uh, things like that, I think, are really, really critical for us to maintain and to expand, right? Yeah, We're yeah. constantly thinking about how can we connect with more people? What additional services could we provide? Mm. Um, so we're trying to put out more digital content, right? Um, you all are a great example of pivoting digital. I mean, oh yeah, we fully yeah. gone. We are we are fully getting into that digital virtual space. We have, you know, that's our entire thing right now because we have to learn to pivot definitely. Yeah, and it's been really awesome to see, um, you know, all the interviews that you guys are doing with politicians and with community leaders. Um, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to speak to you today, but. I think also just being able to go to your YouTube page and just get that positivity of seeing LGBTQ community members still doing their thing, yes. um, you know, thriving in queer and teen. <laughs> um, things like that really matter for people. So thank you for all the work that you're doing. Of course. I mean, it's our pleasure. You know, when this came around, we, because, you know, we, we had a lot of big plans for 2020 um, coming into the summer, right, right through the entire year about what we wanted to do. And we had always knew that we were not necessarily going to transition into the digital virtual space, but to also have that be a big, um, a big part of what we do as team racing. Cause you know, we do a lot of events and shows and things like that, like things yeah. in general, but we really, really wanted to get into this digital space. And so we started out the year, you know, with that as one of our plans. And now we are fully forced <laughs> into making that our bread and butter right now. You know what I mean? So I'm speaking of the things that are coming up, you know, it's May. So the summer is coming up and we would be entering into pride season. Now yeah. with everything going on, tell me, how is that for you? How is that for the DC Center now that Pride in itself is, you know, canceled in the way that we won't be able to get to see each other, you know, in reality, physically? Yeah, I mean, it's, Pride is one of my favorite times of the year. I'm sure it is for a lot of queer folks, right? I mean, just what a time for us to be seen, be ourselves, be mm -hmm. in that community. Um, so it's really, really sad for all of us that we can't um, gather together in large numbers. But yes. I would say, at least from my perspective, Pride is definitely not canceled. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, um, I know that Capital Pride is working on a lot of things. We're working on some events with them. I'm really excited that one of the things that's been able to happen during this time is a lot more collaboration mm -hmm. between LGBTQ organizations in the city. Yes. So especially the DC Center and Capital Pride, you know, we've definitely strengthened our, um, our working relationship and we're, mm -hmm. we're partnering on events already, but going to do a lot more through Pride Month. Mm -hmm. um, and again, looking for opportunities to still have those events, but online, right? So one big event that we look forward to every year for the DC Center is our outright um, literary, yeah. uh, you know, event. And so we're looking at ways to do that online. We're still doing our real affirmation screenings. Um, love it, love it. Yeah. So, um, so making sure that everyone gets their gets their queer content still. Um, <laughs> But I also think, you know, I've seen a lot of awesome grassroots things happening too, like different Facebook groups where people are just um, from all across the country sharing pictures of themselves at prides from previous years. And, you know, um, I know that there's going to be some world pride stuff going on online. So um, I think it's actually going to be a really cool month. Even though we can't be together physically, I'm yeah. really looking forward to all the creative ways that we figure out how to how to still have that space and spread that joy. So I I'm agree. actually looking forward to it. <laughs> I agree. I agree. That that's how I look at it as well. Because I mean, at this point, we are now placed in this position where we have to figure out a way to do this, and it will show just how. Because I mean, as queer people, there's something that comes with the creativity of being queer. Queer people really are, you know, those creative queens you knew we were. And, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, it's very that. So I'm, I'm really excited to see all the things that we are still able to do, that we are still able to get done. And the new things, 
you know, that we're going to be doing, the way to put our creativity and, you know, that innovative spirit out there and really, really get something done, you know, so that is really exciting for me to see. Um, let the people know how people can still go ahead and donate to the DC Center and how they can, you know, support you guys and support everything that you're doing. Yeah, so to donate, you can go to the dccenter.org slash donate. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a great way to support our work. And again, help us even expand to um, those new innovations that we're trying to do in this digital space. Um, you can follow us at the DC Center on all social media platforms, same on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Um, and I would say, uh, you know, we're trying to do more like I said, so stuff on social media and highlight some of the groups going on. Signing up for our listserv on our website is a great way to stay connected, but also just tuning into social media. Um, we do a lot of different support groups. Um, so if you're missing community and you wanna just hop on a Zoom call and you know chat with people, um, it's a great place to look for, for those kinds of opportunities. Awesome. Awesome. And thanks so much for joining me today. It was lovely. Thank you. Of course. And you have a good one now. And to our viewers, thank you for watching.